Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 17035. This build includes a number of new changes and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 17025. So it's been about 10 builds since the last public release uh, and there's quite a few noteworthy changes in this build. So diving straight in, the first noteworthy changes are with the notification center, specifically Reveal effects are now in notifications within the notification center and when they pop out when you receive them. So yes, if I move my cursor over these notifications here, you can see I now have a nice reveal effect, which looks fantastic. This was in one of the Redstone 3 builds, but then they removed it before the RTM, which was odd. But it's back now, which looks great. Uh, it's still not final. I think there's still another effect they need to add, the one which actually follows your cursor within the notification itself. But yes, the reveal effect around the edges of the notifications is now here, and it looks fantastic. And as I said, maybe I've actually got the notifications visualizer here. Yes, no, I don't. I'll install it quickly. So that's now installed. Let's take a look here. You can see that that it's hard to see, but that reveal effect is now here on the edge of this notification as well, and it looks fantastic. So yes, uh, whilst we've got the store open, uh, the store has also been updated on the fast ring and in this build. It now supports physical products, so you can buy things such as Surface devices straight through the Microsoft Store app. And to do that, it's in early testing right now, so you can only do it for a link just to test it out. But if we go here, Shop Surface on Win 10... That should take us to a page dedicated to Microsoft Surface devices where we can now buy Surface devices. So as you see here, let's buy the Surface Studio because I have $3,000 to spend. Uh, it looks just like the product page on the web that you would go to. It's a little finicky here and there. It's very clearly a web page just being presented within the app. Let's click on buy here. And what it's going to do is identify me. Please don't buy this straight out of my pocket. And something else is going to happen. And it's going to take us to the review and checkout area where I can now buy this device if I had the money. Sadly, I don't. So yes, that's pretty much how that works. Really quite fancy. Also, the store app now has uh, acrylic in its hamburger menu. So if we make it smaller, this is mostly going to be apparent on devices with smaller screens. But if we click on the hamburger menu here, you can see it now has the acrylic background there, which blurs everything behind it, which looks fantastic. So the next noteworthy changes are within Edge. If we dive into Edge here and launch something that plays audio, you can now mute a tab without having to go into the tab and close it or pause the video or audio source that's playing. So as you can see here, there's now that little icon there, if I click it, that will mute the audio coming from that tab. This is something a lot of other browsers have had for a while now, so it's great to finally see Edge implementing this. This is something I've been wanting the Edge team to implement for quite a while. Also, it appears to be gone now, but in one of the previous builds, you could absolutely unpin the inking icon and the share icon from the dress bar here, but it doesn't appear to be working anymore. I wonder if they've removed that. But yeah, in one of the previous builds, you could absolutely unpin those, and I just didn't mention it, but turns out you can't anymore. Now, another new change. If we right-click and go to Touch Keyboard and open it up, the Touch Keyboard now has acrylic in it as well. So Fluent Design it really is being implemented everywhere. Why is it so flat? That's weird. But yes, Fluent Design is being implemented everywhere now, and this looks very pretty. I'm very impressed. So speaking of keyboards, in this build, Microsoft is adding a new feature for physical keyboard users that allows you to use text suggestions just like on an on-screen keyboard on your phone or on a tablet. So this is off by default in this build. If we go into settings, we can enable it and I'll show you what it looks like. If we go into devices, typing and turn show text suggestions as I type on the hardware keyboard on. So if we go into, I believe it works in any text field. So let's try notepad. Hello world. So as you can see there, I'm now getting text suggestions just like I would be on, say, an Android phone or an iOS device or even a Windows phone or a tablet or anything with an on-screen keyboard. The quick brown. So to, to use it, if I, I have to use the arrow key so I can press up to select the nearest one. Brown fox jumps over. Oh, it's gone away. The Lazy dog. Now this will take some getting used to, of course. This is something that, at least right now, disrupts my word flow. It may take some getting used to. But yes, it's there now. So I'm, if I'm saying, I don't know, um, Microsoft, if I could spell Microsoft, Microsoft today released, ah, but yeah, it's going to take some getting used to. Try again. Microsoft today released a brand new insider. Preview. No, that won't work. Preview. Why is it all at the end? Build, which 
improved improved upon many features such as um, Microsoft <laughs> Edge and um, Windows Timeline. Oh no, which isn't even in the build. Why is it at the end? So yeah, they've got some, it, it's going to take some work to perfect, of course, and this is still an insider preview build. It's not final, but yes, it's there. So I'm sure at some point, many of you will be very good and quick at that, but that was my first time using it. And as you can see, it does take some getting used to, but that's a pretty cool idea. And I really am. And I really do like the fact that Microsoft is adding the text suggestion field to keyboard, to physical keyboard users, uh, as it's been around on touch keyboards for the longest time now as you can see it shows up there and it's pretty much normal to us so it's good to see microsoft working on some kind of way to implement that uh, on physical keyboards as well so let's dive back into settings in this build sound options are now in the modern settings app as well so as i mentioned in the last build microsoft is working on bringing all of the old control elements from the control panel over to the modern settings app and that's continuing in this build as well. So the sound stuff is now here as well, which looks fantastic. You can troubleshoot things, change volume up and down, change output device, change microphone, and all that good stuff. So apparently Resident 4 is gonna be the release where a lot more control panel elements get implemented into the settings app. And that's great. Uh, one unified settings app is better than two separate ones, in my opinion. So another new feature in this build is something called Near Share. This is essentially Microsoft's version of Apple's AirDrop. And what it allows you to do is share files that are physically nearby. So if we go into the Share UI here, you can see that this device, which also has Near Share enabled, is showing up. And I can click on it to send this web page to that device. And on the other device, a notification will pop up that says, hey, would you like to open this web page or file? And then you can click open or decline and uh, then you can proceed that way. So there you have it guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Still no new big features in testing such as timeline or cloud clipboard. Hopefully they will make it into Insider Preview Builds or at least one of them will before the end of the year. Uh, but yeah, until then, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.